When packing for a flight, there may be some food items, including liquids, that you want to take with you on your trip. But you might be wondering if the food items that you want to take will make it through security or let alone even allowed on the airplane. So in this video, I'm going to break down a list of the most commonly asked about foods and whether or not you can pack them for your flight. Let's go. Dream vacations start here. So before you decide to pack food for your trip, the first thing you need to decide is if you're going to be taking a check bag, a carry-on bag, or both, because depending on which bag you pack food into, it has a major impact on which food items you're going to be able to take with you onto the plane. And in case you're a new flyer, I'll briefly explain the difference between a check bag and a carry-on bag. A carry-on bag would be a small suitcase or bag that is small enough to carry with you onto the plane and would be able to fit into the overhead storage compartments on the airplane. A check bag is going to be anything larger than a carry-on bag that is too big to fit in the overhead storage compartments and would have to be stored in the designated storage area underneath the airplane. The reason it matters what type of luggage you pack food into is because a carry-on bag has stricter security measures than a check bag. And this is because you do have full access to your carry-on bag for the duration of your flight and so you're limited to what you can bring on board. So any liquid, aerosol, gel, cream, or paste has to follow what's known as the 311 rule for a carry-on bag. The rule states that you are limited to travel size containers that are 3.4 ounces or less per item. Now you can pack as many of those containers that fit into one single quart size bag. However, you're only allowed one bag per passenger. So I'm going to break up the list of foods into three parts. The first part is going to be a list of foods that you can pack in either your checked or carry-on bag with no limitations. The second part is going to be a list of foods that are okay to pack in your checked bag but would have limitations in a carry-on bag. And the third and last part is going to be those food items that are exceptions to the 311 rule. And just note, ultimately, the TSA does have the final say on which items of food are allowed through screening. So just because the list I'm going to share are items that TSA has listed as approved foods, the TSA can overrule any item if they choose to. So let's start with the first part. Here's a list of foods that can be packed in either your checked or carry-on bag with no restrictions. Bread, candy as long as it's not a liquid or gel, uh, gummy type candy like gummy bears are okay. Cereal, solid cheese, solid chocolate, coffee, and these can be beans or ground coffee. An empty coffee thermos. I know that's not really a food, but just wanted to put that in there. Cooked meat, seafood, and vegetables, as long as there's no liquid. Cookies, crackers, dried fruits, fresh eggs, gum, nuts. Solid pet food, dry or moist pet food is considered solid food. Pies and cakes, pizza, protein or energy powders, salt, sandwiches, snack bar or snacks as long as it's not a liquid or gel, dry spices, dry tea bags, or loose tea leaves. This obviously is not a complete list, but these are the most common asked about foods. Now let's move on to part two. These are going to be foods that you're allowed to pack in your check bag, but would be limited in a carry-on bag. These foods are creamy cheese, chocolate in liquid form, coffee in liquid form, creamy dips and spreads, gravy, honey, hummus, ice cream, jam and jelly, maple syrup, juices, oils and vinegars, peanut butter, and yes, according to the TSA, peanut butter is considered a liquid, wet pet food, salad dressing, salsa and sauces, soda, soups, and yogurt. To go along with this list, bottled water. There is no limitation to how much you can pack in a check bag. However, you do want to make sure your bag doesn't exceed the weight restriction for a check bag. For most airlines, it's 50 pounds. If you want to pack water in a carry-on, it is subject to the 3.4 ounce rule. Now what I usually do is just pack an empty water bottle and once you're through security, you can fill it up at a water fountain. And most airports these days do have filtered water stations. Alcoholic beverages. Alcoholic beverages with more than 24% but not more than 70% alcohol are limited in check bags to five liters or 1.3 gallons per passenger and must be an unopened retail packaging. Alcoholic beverages with less than 24% alcohol are not subject to these limitations. Now, if you wanted to pack alcohol in your carry-on, there would have to be the mini bottles of alcohol, and they would all have to fit in that quart size bag. Now, any alcohol more than 70% alcohol or over 140 proof are all prohibited in both your checked and your carry-on bag. Canned foods. No problem to pack these in a checked bag. They can be packed in a carry-on bag. However, because of how they appear on the x-ray, it could require additional screening, which could result in the item not being allowed through the checkpoint. For this reason, it's best to keep canned foods packed in a checked bag. Fresh fruits and vegetables. These are allowed to be packed in either your checked or carry-on bag as long as they're not in a liquid or gel form. Just know that if you're flying from either Hawaii, Puerto Rico, or the U.S. Virgin Islands to the U.S., you cannot take most fresh fruits and vegetables due to the risk of spreading invasive plants. 
Fresh meat and seafood and other frozen food. These items and other non-liquid items are allowed in your checked or carry-on bag. If you're going to be packing these items in a cooler or container filled with ice or ice packs, the ice and ice packs need to be completely frozen when going through security. Now, if the ice or ice packs are half melted or slushy or there's liquid at the bottom of the container, they're not going to be permitted to go through security. You can also pack frozen perishables in your carry-on or check bag in dry ice. Now, the FA does limit you to five pounds of dry ice and it does need to be properly packed, vented, and marked. To go along with this, gel ice packs do need to be completely frozen when going through airport security. If they're partially melted in any way, then they would need to follow the 311 liquid rule. The only exception to this rule is that if you're using the gel ice packs to keep medication cool, then they are allowed to be partially melted or slushy. You would just need to notify the TSA officer that you had the medication so that they can properly inspect it. And believe it or not, you are allowed to bring a live lobster with you on board the airplane. Now, I don't think you could claim it as an emotional support animal, but I don't know, maybe you could try. But as far as I know, you are allowed one live lobster with you through security. It does need to be transported in a clear plastic spill-proof container. The TSA agent will inspect your lobster at the security checkpoint. Now, it is recommended that you contact the airline you're flying with to determine their policy on traveling with your lobster before arriving at the airport. Now for the third and last part, the exceptions to the 311 rule. So there are in fact items that you can pack in your carry-on that can exceed the 3.4 ounces of liquid. Those items are formula, breast milk, juice and water for babies, and baby food. Formula, breast milk, and juice are allowed in reasonable quantities in your carry-on bags. Remove these items from your carry-on bag to be screened separately from the rest of your belongings. Also, you do not need to travel with your child to bring formula or breast milk. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you had one of your questions answered, give the video a like and consider subscribing. If you have any questions about TSA rules for food, feel free to ask those in the comment section of this video. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And make sure you check out the show notes in the video description where I'll list some other free resources that may be helpful to you as well. Thank you so much for watching this one and I can't wait to see you in a future video.